Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us at Classroom 20 Live today. I've done something terrific. I actually have my microphone on, and we're all set to go. Our special guest today is Shelley Carroll, and our topic today is mobile motivation, real-world learning with mobile devices. And I know you're going to be ecstatic about the resources and the ideas that Shelley's going to share with us this morning. Um, I wanted to check before we get started, do we have people who are new to Classroom 20 Live? And if you are, at the bottom of the list of participants is a green check and a red X. If you're brand new, can you click on the, the green check and let me know so I'll do a, a quick tour of how to use our Illuminate interface. So, okay. Let's take a look at the Illuminate interface and how you can interact. Of course, right away you figure out how to use this particular tool, the green check and the red X, and we're going to have poll questions in a little while, so we'll be happy to have you use that again. Questions, if you come to the mic, which some of you may do that if you have a USB headset, um, so you can ask questions of Shelly a little later on in the show. If you don't have a headset, then we're going to ask you. If you still want to raise your hand at the bottom left here with the hand, a number will come in front of your name, and then we'll try and take your questions in sequence. You can just chat, add your questions right here in the chat window, and click send. And we'll all see it. I think you've all figured that out. But I want you to notice something. It needs to be this room. If you see that the text that you're typing is a different color than black, that means you're either talking to the moderators or a single participant, which in case you may want to do, uh, recognizing that moderators see everything. But if you wanted everyone to see, you have to make sure it says send into this room. The microphone access is down the bottom left-hand corner. Click it on, it becomes yellow. When it's, you want to shut it off, it's uh, deactivated. Just be sure that we're probably going to be doing walkie-talkie today because of the echoing between our, our guest and maybe yourself as well. Exciting part, we're going to do a little bit of whiteboard uh, tools this morning and having a good time. When I ask you to type on the whiteboard, there's that letter on the left-hand side because we're going to want short answers. I'll ask you to click on that letter when we've given you participant tools for the whiteboard. Before that, we're going to ask you where you are located in the world, and there'll be a map in a second. We need you to click on the blue wand with the starburst on it. It'll give you a little uh, icon that'll float around the map, and you pop it onto the map where you're located. So that's quickly how the Illuminate session will work. Um, you may find it easier if you go to view in your menu bar and switch your layouts to wide layout, and that way. It, the chat will be going on here, then set at bottom of your participants window, which we just saw a second ago. It's just it's a little easier to watch the conversation, which goes by very quickly. And I don't think we're app sharing. It's going to go past that one. Key, exciting. We do have a website, liveclassroom20.com. If you're not familiar with it, we post uh, all our recordings to the show uh, on it with uh, MP3 with um, audio file with the Illuminate session, and we have an iTunes U channel, so the MP4 file is also posted there. And Kim will be explaining a little later on what happens with our YouTube iTunes U channel and how you get access to that information. But if you miss something in that chat window, don't worry. We take the chat, we post it in the archives page, so you can come back and check it out again. So relax. Don't try to write down all the links as we go through the show. So time everyone has the whiteboard tools. Now I'm going to be asking you here on the side of the whiteboard to click on that blue wand with the starburst. Then click and locate yourself in the world. I'm in St. Catharines, Ontario in Canada. I know Shelley is in Germany. So we have a, a nice uh, connection across the Atlantic today. There are a few more people. We have Great Britain, Britain, India, is that Alaska out there? A lot of people in the States. We're looking for someone in Peru. I think that's it. The little dots aren't really all that good. Thailand as well, Shambles, Australia. Fantastic. If you can't make your little um, blue wand work, just type in the chat where you're located. It's just so exciting to see that you're all here. Yes, Peggy gives me goosebumps too to see all the connections that we have. It is phenomenal. So thank you very much, everyone. We do have some poll questions. 
And if you recall, I asked you to do green check red X a few minutes ago. So we're going to ask you to do this, the same thing and use those tools to answer this question. Do you use mobile devices in your classroom? So it's a green check if you do and a red X if you don't. So your tools at the bottom right hand side of the participants window, green check or red X. And we'll take and look at the results in just a second. I hope everyone's figuring out where that green check is. Okay, let's take a look at the results and see. This is really helpful for Shelley so it can guide her conversation. Uh, almost half of the people in this room are not using mobile devices in the classroom, Shelley. So you're going to take that in, into note when we go through the presentation. It is interesting, half or not. I'm going to clear the votes and we're going to go to the next poll question. Does your accessible use policy allow teachers and a student to use mobile devices in your school? A little tougher. Do you have an acceptable use policy that allows students or teachers to use these devices in your school? Green check if you have one, red X if you don't. I hope I'm not going too quickly. Some people are not finding that green check or red X. Maybe it's a time lag and you're not hearing me. So, okay, let's take a look at the results. And we've got 35% who do have one, 28 who don't, and unfortunately, a third of the participants here haven't figured out that green check or red X, or maybe they don't have an answer for the question. So that's the poll questions of the green check and a red X. Now we're going to have more fun. And I'm going to ask you in a second to answer this question by typing on the whiteboard. Try to keep your answers as succinct as you can because we only have so much space on the whiteboard. We are going to be going to, we have two of them set up, so if you, we fill up one, we'll quickly move to the next slide and fill up the rest. So go ahead, you've got the whiteboard tools and type. And we'll start moving things around so we're not on top of each other. Pulling to questions in class as a clicker responder. Podcasting, accessing service information, polls, and we're kind of filling up this one. I'm going to go to the next slide and go ahead and add more comments. to call tech support, microblogging, collaboration online. <laughs> Type slowly. Phoning an expert, great ideas. And remember, we're going to have these whiteboards in the recording so that you'll be able to see what people are saying. Video streaming, Skyping, calling parents. Oh, this is fantastic ideas. Thank you, everyone. We're going to keep those ideas for you and post them in the chat or post them on the, on the uh, recording. So I do want to move forward on the presentation because I want Shelley to have all the opportunity that she can to be with us today and share her information. But just before we get going, um, as we go through the uh, presentation, Tammy Moore is in the chat room and she is doing closed captioning. So if you are now, English as a first language and you're having a little difficulty understanding what either Shelly or I is saying, feel free to use the closed captions function which is at the top part of your screen, click on CC, and you will be able to follow the conversation through typing. So you might want to use that. Thank you, Tammy. As ever, she's a faithful supporter and almost is there every week with us. In fact, I think sometimes she's there more than, the, than we are as the moderator. So yes, give her a, a hand of uh, applause there, a round of applause. Okay, um, again, our topic today is uh, mobile motivation, real world, real world learning with mobile devices, and our special guest is Shelley Carroll, and she does have a website, teacherbootcamp.edublogs.org, and you'll find a lot of great information uh, on her blog and, and 
maybe Peggy, you want to drop in the link to the live binders as well, so that uh, people will know um, where the website is and they can be following along. And Kim will explain a little harder, more as we get through the show how to use that live binder. But those of you who do, there it is, set ready for you to go. Uh, about Shelley. She uh, is located in Germany, as we said a few minutes ago, but she's going to tell us exactly in which city that she's located. She's a freelance technology trainer and social media consultant for language institutes, schools, and educational organizations worldwide. She's an English language teacher to university students, graduate students, high school students, adults, and children. And I am very surprised if there's anyone in the room that doesn't know Shelley Terrell because she's one of the creators of the Twitter um, ed chat uh, sessions that happen on Tuesdays uh, in the day and the evening, and it's brought together thousands and thousands of educators sharing information together. Um, she's also the director of outreach for Parentella, and Parentella is a network and platform for supporting parents and connecting parents to the classroom. And I know that. Uh, Shelley has a really great visual CV for us to check out, and it's in her live binders. And her experience is really far-reaching, and we're so pleased that she could be with us today to share some of that with us. So at this point, Shelley, I'm going to turn the presentation over to you, and I'm going to shut off my mic when I ask you. Perhaps you could start with the newbie question, and what is a mobile device? So again, thank you very much for being with us today. Oh, hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. And I just want to thank Kim and Lorna and Peggy for having me today and doing such a great job of just having everything in this. So this will be a fantastic webinar because they're just so wonderful. Um, and I am so excited that I can share with you all the way from Germany. But also, I'm so excited to have people worldwide in here that I know that do great things with um, mobile devices such as Cow Rainbow and their Shambos Guru and um, Paula and even Scott Newcomb and, and I've got to meet all of these in some kind of uh, virtual setting and in sometimes even in, in my first life um, <laughs> and definitely in my second life. So it's really great to have you all here today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cover this later, what is a mobile device. It's actually one of the things that I get to show you in my presentation. So I'm going to go ahead and start. Uh, sorry, got a little handsy there. Um, and it, half of you aren't using mobile devices, but that's OK, because I'm going to show you some really great information on how to lift the ban, how to use mobile devices without having Wi-Fi, and why I think it's really important to have mobile devices. And I've been kind of traveling around right now, and this is why I chose this topic, because um, especially, I concentrate on language teaching with mobile devices, but really I, I think mobile devices uh, should be in schools. And it's not necessarily a funding issue because governments are always funding things, and it seems that right now they're really funding um, interactive whiteboards. And I would really like to get educators to really get them to support mo having mobile devices, and I'll tell you why in just a little bit. Um, but what do you, let's go ahead and cover some basics. So what do you mobile learning devices look like? And if you can just tap in and type in the chat like what kind of mobile devices you have. Uh, because mobile, well, what basically mobile devices are getting um, smaller and smaller and smaller. But I mean, uh, something such as a digital camera, uh, something such as handheld computers. There are so many things. Yes, flip cam. I mean, the things that you take with you, um, iPhone, iPad, exactly. Um, even if it's an old cell phone, that's a mobile device. So that's what we're going to talk about today. It's not necessarily just a smartphone. Now, I will show you some apps, because I think apps are just amazing and fantastic. So if you have access to that, then that's really fantastic. But it doesn't just have to be that. Um, so these are the ones that I'm going to basically concentrate on today because I can't cover the whole entire spectrum. But if you go to, exactly, there are some netbooks that are just really small as well. I saw one the other day that I want. Uh, I covet so badly. It, it turns, it's this Dell, and it turns into a tablet and a netbook. It's like the best of both worlds. <laughs> but 
So there's so many devices, and I really believe in having all of them, and I'll tell you why. Um, but sorry. But I want to share with you some of the reasons, um, some of the adjectives associated first with what is mobile learning. Now these are some, time, some of the adjectives I've heard during my teacher training sessions of what it means, why to do it, and also wh why we would use these devices, and also what it means for learning, and also what it means for teaching. So what are some of the ones that you can come up with as well? Or think about what it means by anytime, anywhere, handheld, distance. Now these are from teachers. This isn't necessarily from me. This is from uh, different types of educators. But when you think about it, with an interactive whiteboard, and the only reason I'm using interactive whiteboards is this seems to be a very common tool in schools these days. Um, it's not lightweight. Um, you can't take it places. It's not portable. And I think all of these adjectives are really, really important for learning. And the reason is because, especially with these devices, you really can show students that it's anytime, anywhere you can learn. And it's really motivating for students. Students are already using these cell phones as young as five, six. You saw that little boy that was in the very, very first front slide. Now, I got that from Flickr. I put the uh, Flickr thing on there. Um, but even when you think of little young kids, even babies, what is one of the first toys that we give babies? We give them the fake phones. And the reason is because these little fake cell phones, they're so embedded within society. These are things that children are used to. Um, and, and even people in general are used to. It's on-the-go learning. It's everywhere. Even your basic cell phone, the majority of basic cell phones today, even if you can't get the internet, you can always take, you can usually take pictures, you can record audio, you can send text messages, and you can you can just collect everything around you. You can interact with your environment. And students and people are already doing this. They already use their cell phones. They just haven't made the connection sometimes that you can use this for learning. And so this really gives us a way that we can help students to learn um, constantly and to kind of be motivated to learn. So why? Well, these, this is actually a picture from one of my classrooms. This was in Athens. I was teaching with uh, Marissa Constantinidis. She's a fantastic uh, trainer. And so we were teaching these, uh, we were teaching refugees and the refugees in Athens. And a lot of them, we taught them English for free, but they couldn't afford a lot of things. Uh, some of them would come into class every day with the same clothes, and they, were, they weren't exactly well off. So, but one of the things that we did was we asked them to use their cell phones, and pretty much all of them in the classroom except one had a cell phone. And so I think, you know, even in other places that I've been to, in Germany, uh, in the U.S., I, I travel quite a bit. Um, I was in Turkey, and I've used the mobile devices, and the great thing is that People have them. I mean, it's one of the most, it's one of the technologies, is, it's very accessible. Um, it, it's, it's affordable in that way because we can ask our students to actually come into the classroom with it if we just found ways to lift the ban. Now, in the live binders, you're going to find several articles. One that I wrote on how to help, you know, with the ban, you know, to show administrators. But also, there's Lisa Nielsen. She writes a fantastic article that I have in the live binder that I've included um, that tells you uh, 10 ways to lift the ban. And Lisa Nielsen, she's at Innovative Educator. She writes a lot of great stuff for lifting these bans. So, so there's a lot of information out there, and there's a lot of support, and there's a lot of ways to get you to be able to use these devices. It's healthy. This is one of the technologies that once you put it inside the student's hands, the students can move around. Students 
we teach around, I'm doing some research for one of my books right now, The 30 Goals for Educators, and in my research I found that the average amount of time that students around the world go to school is 180 to 200 days. And if you imagine for 180 to 200 days of the year, students are sitting in desks six to eight hours, they're sitting in uncomfortable desks, they carry these huge backpacks, and all of this um, is rather unhealthy for kids. You know, kids should be able to go play, they should be moving around, they should have active lives. And I think if we had these devices inside the classroom, it would be very healthy because we could do that. Because once you put it in the student's hand and it's very, you have an iPod touch or you have even like a digital camera or something like that, then you're able to move around. So that's one of the things that um, I, I re this is one of the reasons I really believe in it, and this is one of the technologies that will get students moving, and it will get them so that they're not sitting in the desk all the time. And if we start having books on these devices as well, then that would ease the load in the backpacks and things like that. <laughs> so that's one of them. It's less training, and one of the reasons why I say it's less training is because teachers you already use uh, cell phones. It, it, it's not that big of a leap. Many of us, when we get these new technologies and things like that, it's a huge leap for us because, you know, we're not used to interactive whiteboards. It's the first time we ever used it or even, you know, um, different things that we incorporate in the classroom. Um, uh, even my LCD projector, that's one of the tech technologies that I have. And that was, you know, I had to take the time to learn how to use that as well. So there there are all these technologies that we integrate in the, in the classroom, and a lot of them we don't know how to use, but we do know how to use a cell phone. Kids already know how to use it, so it, I think there's a lot less um, training involved there. Um, it's very accessible. Many students have it. It's immediate, um, and it's very affordable. But I know Cal Ray Actually, if you go to um, my blog post, I, I had a recent blog post that I wrote about this, and, and Carol says a lot of the things, you know, it, I don't want to paint this kind of picture that it's the easiest thing in the world <laughs> to do this, because it's definitely not, and getting the band listed is one of the challenges, and, and Carol talks about a lot of those things, so you can read it inside the comments here, but this is the article that I'm referring to about this. So now that I hopefully um, have talked to you about mobile learning devices and why I think it's such a great way to transform education and why I think that we should really try to lift the bands and incorporate these inside the classroom and spend our technology budgets on this. We're going to answer the question, how do we introduce this? Because that's a big, difficult step. And I've talked to some teachers about it already. Okay, so I'm going to suggest two ideas. So um, the first one is to have a parent workshop. Um, and I do this in general anyway. I think this is a great way to introduce technologies to parents in general. And something that I like to do in Germany, well, they don't really get access to great Mexican food, so, you know, I can make my famous seven-layer dip. And so uh, this is one way to convince the parents to actually go to this free technology workshop. And in this workshop, we talk about wikis. We talk about their concerns about their children. We talk a lot of different things that... Uh, about the technology, I show them exactly how I'm going to use the technology with their four-year-olds. <laughs> um, and, and so I think it's really important to be transparent. And then at this parent workshop, ask them, can I please have one day, a show-and-tell day, when the students will bring in the cell phone for that day, I'll collect them, um, and, and Karen um, at Coffee Attic, she's, she's going to be doing this with her class. So she'll be talking about this too, and you can find her in the comments of that one post I did. Um, and, and then just have the student come in for one day and show you what their cell phone can do. You know, if they can take pictures. And what I found is that, you know, students will show things. They'll show things about their family. Like, for example, they might show something about um, the They'll show something about their pets and talk about their pets and show pictures on their cell phone or different things like that. So 
when you do this, the great thing about it is that the kids brought in their own technology. They made the connection that with the cell phone that they have every day, that they can already start learning with that and they can do things with that. And also that um, um, also when you do this, you can see the kind of technology that they already have access to. See. And then you can get the parents comfortable because if it happens that day they had a lot of fun and they were learning, um, and you can tie this to something else, then to math or anything like that when you do this, then you really get parents to start being comfortable. But I, I really think you need to ease parents into it. So this is, this is one of the ideas that I have. Now, I want to ask you, how much did that cost you for that classroom full of technology? It cost you nothing. So I, I think even if you can't afford, um, you know, I've been to, to classrooms where, you know, they can't afford. I, I uh, don't get a budget for, for phones in my classroom and things like that. Um, I actually bring in a lot of the technologies. So this is, uh, this is one thing that I, I feel really passionate about because it's one thing that I've been able to get the kids to use and they can bring it on their own. So how does this support real world learning? Well, it's really great you know, that we introduce it and stuff, but um, we also have to, I think, use technology in a very effective way. And these are some of the things that if you do happen to have access to iPads or Androids or um, iPods and things like that, then you can get apps. And um, there are a lot of things with, with apps that really, really support some really fabulous type of projects. And I'll show you some of those by the students. But the four ones I'm going to talk about is, are the multimedia, the augmented reality, um, QR codes, and geolocation. Um, so what does mobile learning in the classroom look like? Well, I have one phone. So you can tell that um, I have my iPhone. And so I use that with the, with a group of children. But my my parents don't allow me to steal my kids. So what I did was uh, Paul B and C and Paul one on Twitter went ahead and he showed one of the apps that I told him about. And he went ahead and this is the first time he introduces mobile learning to the students in Spain. And this is also Graham Stanley's class. And this is in Barcelona. And these kids don't speak English as a first language. They speak Spanish. So I want to go ahead and show this video um, that you can watch really, we'll just play like about 30 seconds so you can see. I want you to look at the kids' faces when you see this video. And I think I can press play. I think everyone has to um, press play to see that. But if you just saw a few seconds of it, even if you went and, and you saw a few seconds, you could see how excited that the kids really were to to use this. And one of the things is um, I think sometimes um, when I do teacher training, they 
they don't believe when I say that I can use one phone uh, with my students. Um, they think that the students are going to go crazy and kind of run around and things like that. But they're so excited that they, this was to motivate them to use English. But they're so excited. And you could tell that all of them were watching the one student use the phone. So that's just one example of what it looks like. Now, that was the first time. And that was a teacher who had never really used it before. So that's what it, it kind of looks like the first time around. See, it's not that scary at all the first time you use it. <laughs> Um, but I want to show you some of the different tools. We'll start off with multimedia tools. And these can be found on uh, regular cell phones as well. You don't have to have a smartphone for this. But you have the ability, if you do, I have an iPhone, so this is all for my iPhone. You have the, the ability to take videos, photos, texting, and audio recording. And I believe that, you know, it, even during tests and stuff, I think it's great when students start texting answers and things like that because that means that they know the answer, first of all. And second, it means that they're collaborating and helping with somebody else. So I think if you allow it ahead of time and you kind of set guidelines and things like that, that, that students will act responsibly. Um, I, I think we just got to trust students a little bit more. Um, and then you can also record audio. Now, I want you to think about just these basic multimedia tools and what you could do just with this technology and one small phone in your classroom. Um, it, because most cell phones do have this kind of technology to record audio, to take video, or to take pictures. So something that I can think of right away is that you use in every subject, for example, is brainstorming. You can record your thoughts. And then this is a really great way to brainstorm and, and to really think about things like before you write an essay or maybe a word problem. You can have the kids for math, for example, uh, think of word problems, take pictures uh, to support the word problem. You know, we have on these standardized tests things, word problems such as, oh, you know, Judy walked to school and then she went to housework. One and how many, you know, miles and things like that. Well, the kids could actually take pictures of that, and this would really help support a lot of language learning and things like, I mean, a lot of the understanding because kids, sometimes they need to visualize. Um, they, they need to be able to um, be able to do different things um, with their learning. Some are visual learners, some are audible. Um, so this really helps support that. Uh, they can work together and brainstorm for a project. They can actually make a video presentation of their project. So these are a lot of things you can do just with having a regular cell phone. None of this requires um, the internet, the ones that I've talked about right now. Ah, OK. Sorry, I went a little bit crazy there. OK. <laughs> um, but there are some multimedia apps. These, once you download them onto your, now these are iPhone specifically, but some of these do work on Android. I'm not really sure with BlackBerry. I think some of them also work with BlackBerry, but not all of them. So these are some of the things you can get on your iPad or your iPhone. Puppet Pals. This was so fantastic. There's in the free version, it has uh, four sets. Students get to do the set. They also get to go ahead and they get to um, they get to make their own show. They get to record it. Now they do need a certain type of um, they need the special earphones that usually comes that usually you will get the little white ones. Um, you probably know the ones I'm talking about in order to do the voice recording. So that's just a note there. Um, and then I'll show you mouth off later. Story robe is fantastic. I'll show you an example of that. Talking Tom. So these are all the ones I suggest. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll put these in the live binder as well. But I want to show you examples of what some of them look like. This one I like to use with um, older students. This is called Mind Blowing. And it's a free one. And this is what it looks like. Basically, you make an interactive mind map. You, instead of just having text, what you do is you have your mind map. You can name it anything. So let's say your mind map going to be for, for the kids, of course, um, you know, we use simple topics like pets and things like that. But let's say it's for, for a project. So let's say that your students have a project, I don't know, chemistry or um, 
I saw one the other day on soap. <laughs> they had to create their own soap. So they can name the mind map, and then after they name the mind map, um, it, whatever they name it comes in the middle, and then after it comes inside the middle, then they add a picture, they can add a video recording, and they can add audio. Then after that, if you do have the internet, then they can they can do all of this offline. They don't need um, the internet. But if they want to email it to the teacher or to another student, then they would, would need the internet. So I mean, this is definitely one of those things where if you did have iPods in the classroom, um, you could collect them at the beginning. They don't have to be online. They can make these. And then towards the end, you can go and you can export these to the mail to show their parents and things like that. So that's mine. Uh, the next one I want to show you is Story Kit. Story Kit is from the Children's Library. It's really fantastic. Not only does it include in this app ways, you have all these classic books there um, that are already included. And the kids can go and they can take a classic book like The Three Little Pigs and they can go and they can rewrite the story. This is great for projects such as rewriting the ending, telling it from a different point of view, the wolf's point of view. I mean, so this is really fantastic. Or they can even start a new book and make their own. I want to show you what that looks like because I had um, my friend at CCELT. I worked with her kids and um, Cecilia Lemos kids in Brazil. Their first language is Portuguese. It's not English. Um, and they they made their own story. So this is Gabby, and Gabby is going to share her story. I'll show that in just a sec. But this is what it looks like. When the kids see it, they can edit the pages. They can add a picture. They can add audio. So I'm really into this multimedia. You get a private link that you can share with parents. And guess what she did? She shared it with her grandfather, her uh, uncles. I, I think she had an uncle in Spain. or uh, So you can share it anywhere. Um, and this is what the story looks like on the actual website. So it's actually published online, and it's a private one. So we're going to go ahead and play this video. And remember, you have to click on the video. Well, no, it's not only applicable for kids, but I mean, you can use this with adults. Adults can, can use these. They like to use these kind of things, too. <laughs> but that's a great one, though, for asking. <laughs> So we're going to play this video, and remember, I think you have to actually click play on the video to see it in the web tour. Hi, I'm Gabby. My favorite thing is my art box. Can you guess what what's inside? What is this? What are these? Who are they? I can color! My things! So hopefully you saw that. And remember, she's from Brazil. Um, one of the things that I don't like to do is I don't like to, I, I think mistakes are good. So if the kids have mistakes, I like to keep them there. I think it's really good for their portfolio towards the end so they can see where how much they've grown. Um, but yeah, definitely make them, you know, where, and the reason I say that is if there's any language teachers there, they can know why um, I'll have an example maybe that has not everything perfect. Um, but the, the parents don't mind. The kids love it. I mean, and, and it was so great because her brother said, oh, I want to do one too. I want to do one too. The kids, they just really have a good time. And you could tell even with her voice when she was saying, I can make things. I thought that was just fantastic because she 
it wasn't rehearsed or anything. She just kind of was so excited to do this. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to show you another example, which is Story Robe. Story Robe is, in a lot of these you can see they support digital storytelling, which I think is a really effective way to learn different topics and subjects and things like this. This one's so easy. It's only three simple steps, Story Robe. And this is exactly what it looks like when you open it up in your, um, in, in your device. You can create a story, you can open the story, and then you can share. They can take pictures. They, but the, you can see how they're interacting with the real world, uh, with the world around them. They're interacting. That's why I really like these different types of apps here because it gets them to take their surroundings and it really personalizes it and it individualizes it and it really makes that connection. Um, it, it makes it very motivating for them. So I'll give you an example of what this one looks like. This is Felipe. Uh, Felipe is only six years old and he's from Brazil too. So we can now play this example to see what his story robe looks like. <laughs> and it's starting automatically, so. <laughs> And so I think we're going to play this uh, YouTube video. <laughs> yes, please. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so Felipe's going to show. So he's six. And remember, I use them with four-year-old students. So um, yeah, I, I have seen examples with extremely young, even two years old. Um, I was. If you look online, you'll see there are so many great examples out there. <laughs> that's that's it's funny. Loading, loading. Loading. <laughs> wanted to wonder what this is. Um, I'm going to show you a few ones that are really fantastic that I support. Now, unfortunately, not all the augmented reality apps are free, uh, but you can use these offline. Once you have the app on there, you can use it offline. You don't need the internet. Um, 
and, and they're just fantastic. Augmented reality means where you have this mixture between the virtual world and the physical world. So you bring the virtual world into your physical world. We're going to look at a few and what they look like. Now, I should have shared this video with you because this is the EcoBugs. And EcoBugs, these this is a group of teachers, I believe they're from the UK, and they are the ones who helped create this app. Not only is EcoBugs this fantastic app, um, it has lesson plans that come with it. So what happens is that you, the kids have a bug, and you put these little, um, let's see, let me go ahead and get, uh, an, I think I have, arrow tool. Okay, so maybe I can point at it, but you get these these little pictures um, that you see on the ground here, and then you can make your your marks and things like that, and then the children, they go together in a group, and they're able to go ahead, and they're able to work together to find the different types of, here it is. <laughs> so you get those papers, and they try to find these papers, and once they put their phone over the paper, they see the bug walk in. You can see the bug that's on the phone. I'll put another the red dot on the bug walking in. Now the bug isn't there, but on the phone, this is what they see. And then they click it, and then they have to name it. They have to talk about its environment, its habitat. So there's a lot of different things you can do. This is one of my favorite augmented reality apps. This is called, and I use it quite a bit. In fact, you can see me over here with my friend, uh, at Nutrich, uh, which is Richard, <laughs> um, at Nutrich, <laughs> and we're playing, this is what it looks like. Uh, this is a great one because what you do is you just play soccer. You can do it anywhere. So there's actually a soccer ball. You can see my phone right there. There's a soccer ball on there, uh, or a football ball if you're from the UK or other places. So what you can do is you can go ahead and you can play with another partner and it's really great when you have them do directions. You'll see that a lot of kids will just start talking about it and things like that. Now I don't I don't think you have to pay for this one. It it should be free but unfortunately um, in different sometimes with the Android they make you pay for, for some of these apps. Um, but it, it, yeah, it's great for directions. A lot of kids, it's great for them to tell each other. Uh, uh, you'll see that they'll say, no, I got the ball, or no, I'm winning, or different things like that. So this is what that looks like in action. And you can play it anywhere. Mm -hmm. And I do play it anywhere. Um, okay, so there are, now we're going to talk about another difficult one, which is um, QR reader. Um, QR readers. And Shambo's girl is in here, and maybe he can share some resources, because he does so much fantastic stuff with QR codes. He's just like QR code master. So really, uh, <laughs> he would be the best one to see for that. But I really enjoy QuickMark. I paid um, for that one. If you just look up QR, if you search for that as an app, then you'll be able to find free ones that are really good. Uh, the reason I use QuickMark is because it's rated the best and it does 3D and it, it reads different types of codes as well. So I'll show you what this looks like. Yeah, there are tons of QR code readers. And for every, uh, for BlackBerry, for Android, they all have the different versions. So what does a QR code do? Well, a QR code adds more information. This is me at the British Library with Terry Friedman. And what we're doing is we're interacting with this fantastic exhibit. And to get more information, we just scan. And once we scan, this is what it looks like when you scan it on your on your phone. And notice that he's scanning it with, a, with an Android phone. This is not an iPhone he's using. So... When he scans it, he'll be able to do things like he'll be able to um, uh, see videos. He can come up with a web page. He can, one of the best examples I saw were there were people around the city, and I believe it was, it, it was London, um, and what they did was they, record, they recorded different stories of locations. Um, it, and it, was this, it wasn't for education, but it was this wonderful group of poets and writers, and they just bite different locations, and they recorded stories, and when you went to that location, you could scan the QR code that was there, and you could listen to the stories, or the poetry, or the song that was associated, 
and so I thought this was a fantastic way to use QR codes. But it, it's a way to really just provide more information and more of an experience with students. And with that example, you can tell that you're interacting with the real world. You're able to, uh, you, you, you just can't do this. with any other technology. Um, and, and that's why I think it's just fabulous. Um, and to be able to get students to do this would be fantastic. And the next one are uh, geolocation. Now, some of the apps that I've already showed you, they kind of mesh all of these. Usually, AR, augmented reality, has geolocation. Geolocation, the best way to describe it is Foursquare. How many of you have seen Foursquare tweets, I am the mayor of so-and-so? That is geolocation. <laughs> what it does is it allows you to be in a location and it, it really um, record information there. Now, Voices is, is a really good one. This was recommended by Graham Stanley, and you, you saw his class earlier. Um, and so what this does is students are able to go, and they're able to give you a little tour guide of their, well, anybody can do this, a tour guide of where they live, what are their favorite places, what are their favorite hangouts. And so when you go anywhere, if you have this, if you have this, you can go in your cell phone even tomorrow, and you can go to maybe one of the famous locations or things like this um, in, inside your area. And when you click this, you'll be able to see who's already recorded a story for that. So. Um, or information about that, what they have to say. There are so many apps. There was one that I um, had, the augmented reality one, um, where the Sekai camera, and, and the Sekai camera, let me go ahead and go back to that one, actually. I'll go back to that really quick because I have a little bit of time. Um, Sekai camera. Okay, so here we go, the Sekai camera. This is based in Japan, so it's, it's much bigger in Japan, so when I get to go visit Tokyo, I'm really excited to use this app. But one of the great things about Sekai camera is it uses geolocation as well as augmented reality, and so basically I can just point my camera, uh, I mean my phone up to the city, and then I can see everybody that's there that's chatting, I can play games with them. If I'm inside my, the subway, the metro, the S-Bahn there, um, I, I'm able to play against them different games um, online. So it, 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 it uses geolocation, but it gets you to interact with the people around you. And I really think this is just fantastic that you're able to do this. And you can play games like Scrabble and things like that. So it's really just so educational. I think this is just fantastic. And I can't wait for this to just get very advanced everywhere. Kids can even share virtual pets and stuff on the Sekai, the Sekai camera. I know I butchered the pronunciation for that. <laughs> um, okay, so those are the things that I have showed you. And this is one of my favorite ones, which is Mouth Off. And so you can see me using this Mouth Off app. Um, and I tend to use it in most of, um, <laughs> in all of my actual different types of, <laughs> the different types of presentations that I do. I usually do it live <laughs> so you can see it. I'll, I'll put a few interviews where you can see me using it. But basically, I used this actually with a three-year-old, uh, Ken Wilson's nephew. He loves this. They can choose different types of mouths, and then when I talk, the mouth moves. So this is me using this scary mouth. <laughs> and the great thing about this Mouth Off app is that there's one that kids created. They drew the mouth. And they color them, and it's a free app that you can use with the kids. So you really support something really fantastic, kids using and creating their own type of app. So I really think you should check that out. Um, usually when you look up Mouth Off, you should be able to see the other one just as well. Um, so this is all my information to share with you today. I think I got it just in time. And if you have any questions, you can tweet me, or you can find me on my email. If, and so these are the resources. <laughs> Thank you so much, <laughs> Shelly. If you have a question that you'd like to ask, you can continue typing in the chat, or you can click on the hand with the green arrow pointing upwards, and we'll give you the mic. I think there was just a lot of conversation and excitement about trying these apps.
I know that I jotted down several, and I'm going to be following up on these afterwards. And I, I love the, the mouth off one, too. I'm going to go ahead and formally close out the session, but we do invite you to stay on and continue the conversation or ask questions of Shelly. We want to let you know that next Saturday we will be having a, our featured teacher session for May, and the special guest will be Cheryl Oates, and she'll be sharing ways she uses technology with her high school students. And these are the interviews that Steve Hargadon will have upcoming next week. On Tuesday will be a continuation of the ST Virtual Conference and continuing those conversations. Um, Future of Education with Steve will be a panel on the passion-based education with um, Angela Meyer, Steve Farber, I believe, as well as um, Lisa Nielsen and I and. George Carlos. Anyway, you'll want to check that out on Tuesday. Wednesday, he's going to be talking with Hugh McGuire, and on Thursday, Paul Kimmelman. And these are all going to be fantastic sessions coming up next week at 5 p.m. Pacific and 8 p.m. Eastern and 12 a.m. GMT time. And as soon as you exit today's session, a link will open in your browser, and it will have the link to our survey. And if for some reason it doesn't open, you can always um, type in tinyurl.com slash cr20live survey. And you can do that whether the survey opens up in your browser or if you've watched a recording and you would like to request a professional development certificate for a recording that you watched that was in a live session. You can just enter in the tinyurl.com slash cr20live survey and input your information. And you can include information on the survey today about today's session, as well as suggest future guests and topics that you would like to have on Classroom 2.0 Live. In the area to request the professional development certificate, we just need your name and email address. And Peggy will take care of sending that out to you this weekend. And you can either email us or type in the URL of the CR20 Live survey for the survey and request a certificate. Peggy has also helped us coordinate an iTunes YouTube channel and the URL to open directly the channel directly in iTunes is tinyurl.com slash cr20live iTunes U. All one word, cr20live iTunes U. And then you can download the podcast of the, the entire chat log of each session, the MP3 and the MP4 of every week. And you can take those with you um, via iTunes or put them on your iPod, iTouch and take us with you wherever you go. And we want to extend a very special thanks to Shelly for joining us today, as well as to Steve Hargadon, who's the founder of Classroom20.com and Future of Education. And a very special thank you to each of you who participated today and shared resources and comments, as well as to illuminate and learn Central for providing this forum for us to meet each and every week at this same time. And yes, the passion, uh, the panel on Tuesday is going to be a continuation of the virtual conference with Angela Myers for the passion, um, the passion-driven panel. And you can find out more information on those things at futureofeducation.com. So if you have a question, and I will put up Shelly's Twitter and contact information, that's her email. Her Twitter is Shell Terrell, and that's one of her websites, the, the PD Works Wiki. And we do hope that you will continue the conversations online and offline. And if we, if we happen to miss a question today that you'd like to ask, we still have time, and we would love for you to take the mic 
or you can type your questions in the chat. And then we will um, ask those questions of Shelly for you. And Illuminate does require Java in order to work. I'm not sure about Flash, but I'm assuming that it does. But it's not on a mobile device. It's not available to attend an Illuminate session on a mobile device yet. Um, last year, I heard it was in the works. But with the buyout, I'm not sure where that stands. You've not downloaded any QR codes. Um, there are QR codes. I know I've seen some on uh, like L'Oreal, the shampoo, and some of their ads in magazines. They, they have QR codes on some of their advertisements, as well as um, just lots and lots of different things. And Peggy posted a link in here to the mobile conference that was held um, about six weeks ago or four weeks, a month ago. And part of their activities was a um, scavenger hunt using QR codes. And she posted the link um, to the resources as well as the information on the Posture's blog post and ways to use QR codes. Yes, and, and uh, Vicki Davis has written about using QR codes. And Vicki Davis has her QR code on her blog so that you could take your iTouch or, or cell phone camera that has the QR code app on it and take a picture on our blog and then it will read that information that's down in the QR code. And the live binder link um, that's our live binder link and it has the information and the live binder links that um, or the link to Shelly's live binder that she created for today's session. Included in our live binder link as well. So um, you can access her resources that she wanted to share with you today as well. Yes, only the iPad 2 and the new iTouch because you do need a camera or a smartphone in order for the QR codes to work. And so it uh, looks like channel is familiar. There was splash up. I know I personally am not. So if we don't have any more questions, then we'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and close up the conversation today. It looks like some of the questions are winding down. down. These, we want to thank you again, Shelly, for, for doing this. This was a fantastic presentation. And I know that uh, people are hitting iTunes right now uh, to download some of these things on the Android app market um, to download some of the QR stuff as well. So this has been fantastic. So thank you, everybody, for joining us today. And be sure to join us next Saturday when Cheryl Oaks will be with us. That will be another fantastic session and ways that she uses uh, technology with her high school students. So make sure you set your alarms for 12 and set your calendar for 12 p.m. Eastern next Saturday. And I know I've tried it on the iPad and stuff, Lynn, and it, it just doesn't, doesn't work. I know WebEx and GoToMeeting, I believe those are on um, some of the um, mobile yes, devices. Yes, I see what I'm saying. Thank you all so much. I just wanted to say.
Absolutely. Um, uh, Kim and Lorna and Peggy for having me. Thank you so, all so much for again, being here. Thank you everybody for joining us today. Have a great weekend. Uh, to get and more, we'll more, 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 more next Saturday at the same time. <laughs> and, if you have a link, and hopefully see you during the week online. The thank you everybody. Have a great day. Thank you all so much for having me. Recording stopped.